An unavoidable tension in attacking the opioid crisis is which time frame you're talking about. In the short term, many policies that would limit opioid prescriptions for the purpose of saving lives can cause people to turn to heroin or fentanyl. In fact, over a five to 10 year period, that would increase deaths, not decrease them, according to a simulation study published in the American Journal of Public Health. That's not good. This is Healthcare Triage News. Special thanks to Austin Frack, from whose Upshot column this episode was adapted. A large proportion, 80% by one estimate, of heroin users in the United States previously used prescription opioids. In some cases, they were directly prescribed narcotic pain relievers, perhaps after a painful dental procedure or operation. In addition, drugs prescribed to one person can be diverted to others who don't use them for medical purposes. So restricting opioid prescriptions would seem to make sense, but it's not so simple. That approach reduces access to drugs for people who legitimately need them for pain. Prescriptions can be avoided for cases of mild to moderate pain, think of a sprained ankle or a tooth extraction. Opioids could largely be reserved for much more severe pain, like the pain that accompanies major surgery and cancer, for example. The simulation study bears this out. Reducing opioids for short-term pain saves lives in the long run, even as it leaves some patients experiencing more pain. This is the fundamental trade-off opioids present, with which we have been battling for decades. As the pendulum swung further towards treating pain, opioid-related deaths ballooned. Now to stem the deaths, it is swinging back, challenging us to treat pain in other ways. The opioid epidemic is really a syndemic, meaning it's composed of multiple concurrent epidemics driven both by prescription pain medication and by illicit heroin and fentanyl. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention estimates that more than 70,000 people died of a drug overdose in the last year, most of them from opioids. By one estimate, over the next 10 years, opioids could kill over a half million more, two thirds from heroin and one third from prescription pills. A recent study in JAMA estimated that clamping down on opioid prescribing would result in a very small reduction in opioid-related overdose deaths, no more than about 5% by 2025. The American Journal of Public Health Study looked at the effects of 11 policies to address the consequences of opioids. These included tightening the reins on prescribing, like policies to promote greater prescription drug monitoring, or limits on how many days that opioids could be prescribed, as is now expected for Medicare drug plan coverage and reflected in some private plans. They also include policies that would reduce harm from opioid misuse, like expanding the use of the overdose rescue medication naloxone or addiction treatment. The bad news in the short run is that no one policy by itself would put a substantial dent in the expected number of deaths from opioids. The most effective single policy, according to the study, is increasing the availability of naloxone. But doing so would reduce the total number of predicted opioid deaths over the next 10 years by only about 4%. For bigger gains, we have to do more. The good news is that combining increased access to naloxone with more needle exchanges and addiction treatment could save more than twice the number of people than naloxone alone. Policy interventions can prevent many deaths and help prevent some of the other destruction that opioids cause to individuals, families, and communities. But prescription opioids are neither all bad nor all good. Policies that sound sensible, potentially helping many people, could also cause a lot of damage, particularly in the short run. Hey, do you like the show? It really helps if you like the video and really if you subscribe right down there. And another good way to support the show is at patreon.com. Go to patreon.com slash healthcare triage. We'd especially like to thank our research associate, Joe Sevitz, and our Surgeon Admiral, Sam. And if you love healthcare triage content, get even more at the Healthcare Triage Podcast. It's great. Get it at iTunes or Spotify or wherever you download your podcast content.